Greetings everybody from my 2014 Mercedes-Benz GL250 Bluetech. Sorry, GLK250 Bluetech. I was concentrating on accelerating there. And I wanted to give another update on my ownership experience with this car and um, what has happened during my ownership. So to recap, <clears throat> I bought the car with 144,314 miles. So I've now put just a little over 8,000 miles on it. Um, I just had a set of snow tires installed and um, you know they they were the cheapest ones I can't remember what brand they are if you're interested post it in the comments and, and I can ask but it was like 650 bucks uh, for the tires and then my local shop charges 30 per tire for SUVs to mountain balance them so basically 800 all in for four snow tires um, I just learned about uh, a tire company from some other YouTuber that I had never heard of before and I went on there and I couldn't believe their prices. Um, I actually ordered a set of snow tires for my GR Corolla as well uh, from there for like 380 bucks. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. These, these snow tires that I have on it are so quiet and um, they, they just, uh, they, they handle well. It's going to be really fun to see when we first get some snow, uh, what they're like. Um, <clears throat> I have had for, I'm going to say at least a thousand miles now, the message, let's see if I can get this up here, uh, this one, the check additive message. I think I made another video about that and was uh, was going to um, post that combined with another message about uh, when it finally required me to get the uh, fluid, but I decided to just go ahead and throw that in this update here. And uh, I don't know if uh, you've seen some of my other videos about this car. It's got a little situation with the oil pan um, and the intermediate, intermediate shaft for the driver's side CV axle passes through there and there's a carrier bearing <clears throat> and there's a little bit of play in between the bearing and the oil pan. Now, I discovered it by accident. I don't have any symptoms from that. And I'm guessing it's been like that ever since I bought the car and probably for tens of thousands of miles before then. So my experiment is going to be just to see how far I can go before it actually becomes an issue. It could break tomorrow uh, or it could break 100,000 miles from now. Who knows? So that'll be part of my, uh, part of my experiment with this car. But... So the most remarkable thing is I really haven't had to do anything to this car. It, it has had no issues whatsoever in the 8,000 miles I've put on it so far um, that have needed to be addressed. Now, it did have a couple deferred maintenance items. Um, the transmission oil was overdue for a change, and... Um, I bought everything I need to do that. Um, it, if you ever attempt to do the transmission oil on a 7G Tronic transmission or 7G Tronic Plus, like what's in this one, I highly recommend you prepare yourself and you have the right equipment, especially a fluid transfer uh, pump that's designed specifically for this transmission. I tried that job uh, when I had my 2011 uh, E350 Formatic, and it ended up being an absolute nightmare and taking all day. And I ended up burning my hand on or my arm on the exhaust. I, it was one big fiasco. I didn't make a video about that. 
Um, but I learned a lot and uh, if you have everything prepared and you know what to expect, you can take your time and be meticulous and do the job from start to finish in about two hours. Uh, that's how long it took me on this one. And uh, so I did that, I don't know, maybe 6,000 miles ago and it's been shifting fantastic since then. So I think I got it right. Um, I ended up using the Pento Sen, what was it called, like FE-134, I don't remember. It was the, the blue fluid with the green overflow pipe. So um, the other thing is the coolant had never been changed. So I drained and refilled the coolant. It was a little tricky getting it bled. Um, I had to keep like squeezing the radiator hose to kind of force it through. I had it on defrost. I want to say it took about 10 minutes before I, it started blowing heat. Um, and then after that it was fine. I think I had to maybe top it up once and uh, it's been holding steady since then. <clears throat> so other than that, no issues. Um, a lot of people say these engines have timing chain issues. Um, I have absolutely no sign of any timing chain issues. It, it starts uh, perfectly quiet. I did, a, I did one cold start video you want to look that up of what it's supposed to sound like um, I think it's extremely important to use the correct Mercedes-Benz spec oil in these cars even if you do 10,000 or more mile uh, oil changes this one has had between 10 and 14,000 mile oil change intervals but using the correct oil um, I popped the cap off uh, for the oil filler to look down in there and it's it's nice and clean there's no sludge or anything down in there and it's even after the last oil change before I bought the car was run 14,000 miles I am actually probably going to slightly stretch the 10,000 mile interval when I change the oil because Every time I drive this car, um, I drive it at least a half hour, always get it completely warmed up, uh, a lot of times a lot longer than that, um, so it's a lot less stress on the oil. Um, I will probably end up covering the 10,000 miles in about four months. So I'll probably go 11, 12,000 miles. I'm highly confident the... Uh, the engine will still be running perfectly in this car long after the body rusts apart. So that's that's really the the only pending issue with this car. So these these cars are part of the Mercedes-Benz extended warranty for the rear subframe. Um, I've done a couple videos about the rear subframe. It's not quite to the point of needing replaced on this car. I think I can get another couple years out of it before it's perforated all the way through but there are some heavy rust spots on it and it is starting to flake in a few places um, the most surprising and I also did a video about this was up above the rear subframe there uh, like on the body the unibody part of the car where it's like got the, the gray color uh, several several spots have started bubbling and you can see rust coming through there um, so what I did um, was I got under the car there and I I used some of the uh, extend rust treat or rust converter um, it basically converts the rust into a black uh, compound I think it's called iron iron oxide or maybe iron oxide is the rust uh, I don't remember exactly but it basically converts the rust into a black um, substance and it protects it from uh, from further rust probably will have to do that every year um, that I have it but I definitely wanted to to hit that 
before it has a chance to rust all the way through and leave holes in the body in the back. Um, so that was kind of surprising. You know, it's funny when you get under a car and you start looking around, there's lots of little things you can find, uh, lots of little surprises. Um, and, uh, yeah, so interesting story about the, uh, the rear subframe that's, uh, affecting, again, several models. Um, I saw a, I'm going to say it was a 2011 or 2012 C300 for sale on Craigslist. And the person said that they're selling it cheap because the rear subframe has broken to the point where one of the rear, uh, rear arms had, uh, completely separated. <clears throat> so I messaged that person and, uh, I said, you know, you can get that fixed for free. And I, uh, sent them a screenshot of the warranty. They had no idea. So there's probably a lot of people driving around cars that are affected by that that have no idea about that. Um, he messaged me back and, and uh, just thanked me profusely and, and said, you're a lifesaver. So that made me feel good to be able to help somebody out like that. Um, you know... Depending on the circumstances, you know, there might have been a time when I would have just bought the car, gotten it fixed, uh, but, and I'm sure most people would do that, but I don't know, just something about the way that the, the ad was worded um, let me know that that person was actually very distraught about the situation and they, they couldn't really afford what, what the implications were with that. So, I just, yeah glad I really glad I did that and every time I see like a c-class from that era or even these GLKs there's a whole bunch of them that are affected e-classes uh, I think as recent as 2016 some of these cars are included in that 20 year unlimited mile warranty um, so it'll be interesting to see how long it holds up in this car and then yeah, there is one other thing. So after I put about 2,000 miles on this car, I developed... Uh, it depends on the bump I go over. It's either a creaking or a clunking coming from the front end. Um, that actually popped up, and that was eventually how I discovered the, uh, the axle shaft issue. I was trying to track that down. I, I'm thinking it's it might be a strut mount or something like that. Um, the car passed a PA inspection when I first got it, um, and it's very thorough, especially on the suspension. And I just when they uh, when I had it in for snow tires, they checked the suspension as well. Uh, everything checked out. I looked under there myself. Um, I grabbed a hold of the uh, strut, couldn't move it. So I'm not sure what that is. Um, and the funny thing about it is, is when it's really cold out uh, or really warm out, there's absolutely no sound coming from it. Um, it's only at a certain temperature range that I get any noise from it. And it's only at very low speed. So it's it really struck me as something I don't need to deal with right now. And um, I had something similar, uh, noise like that, pop up in my uh, 2018 Equinox. And it wasn't even related to the suspension at all. It was, uh, so there was some kind of a mounting sleeve for the radiator that um, caused a noise, actually quite similar to this. It made quite a racket. and the repair was to apply some like extra thick tape or something to the bottom of the radiator it was a pretty big job though they had to rip rip off the whole front bumper and whatever but it was covered under warranty because i bought that car cpo um i did a video about that car if anybody's interested it was a diesel equinox um but that thing was a piece of junk i mean it was in the shop it had eighteen thousand miles on it when i got it 
and was in the shop four times for $2,500 worth of warranty work. Pretty insane. Um, but uh, this, this car, again, over 8,000 miles, completely trouble-free. I was expecting this to be pretty good because when I checked it out on the test drive, everything checked out. Um, I just knew it was a good one. I knew the whole maintenance history on it. Um, I have basically everything that's ever been done to this car. Going back before I had it, the biggest issue uh, that was customer pay was the, uh, oh, that sun is really bright, the DEF tank. Uh, had to be replaced. I don't know if it was just the heater or level sensor or something like that And they paid like almost two thousand dollars to have that done I know some people have gotten that covered by the AEM warranty and other people have not I think it just depends on the dealership, but I know I'm not gonna have to worry about it anytime soon because it was already done the the AEM warranty on this car was done at hundred and nineteen thousand so I still have I don't know, 15,000 miles of a pretty extensive warranty left on a lot of stuff. Um, look it up if you uh, have one of these and you're interested in what's covered by the warranty. I mean, it covers things like the cylinder head, glow plugs, turbocharger, intake manifold, all the sensors, DPF, um, with a few exclusions, such as the DEF tank. So, you know, other than that, this 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 car uh, has a pretty extensive warranty on it uh, for a lot of stuff. So all all the emissions stuff, for the most part, a lot of the engine stuff, and uh, the rear subframe. That's all still under warranty on this car. But um, anyway, well. Those are my latest thoughts on this car. Uh, this is my favorite car that I've had in a long time. I just find this thing so engaging to drive. Um, I've had over a hundred cars. A lot of them are on this channel. Um, if you want to dig back through some of my videos and see some of the... I've, I've had a lot of oddball cars, a lot of very rare cars. And um, anyway... Hey, if you've made it this far, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it, and have a great day, everyone.